Hey, everybody. We are here with Amy Kim from Kindtail. Amy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to talk to you about anything retail and product development. Well, let's start with, yeah, how did you get into all of these things and and tell us a little bit about the origins of Kindtail? So I have a history in design. Um, I started out my career as an automotive designer, and then I slowly transitioned into product designer. And it was during that time when I was living in New York City. I got my dog monkey and I was trying to collapse his ugly wire crate and I hurt my finger and I thought, oh my, like there, there's gotta be a better product out there and I couldn't find one. And I was like, okay, there's an opportunity. So I invented the best crate there is for my dog monkey. And then that's how I started the company Kindtail. Okay, so now most people come across a problem and they don't necessarily have the skill set or know they have the skill set to actually fix the problem. And not only for themselves, for a wider audience. How how did you have the skill set, or what do you think is required to to take that action? Some people, well, I actually had you know history in design, but I see a lot of brands where the founder just started because they had an idea and then they just wanted to solve that problem for them. So, um, I mean, for me, it was a little bit easier because I had my design background and my product is you know, launched off the design of the crate. But I, I just think that anyone could actually start a business if they really wanted to, and they have the itch to solve the problem that they want to. Okay. And then you applied your design background with, did you have to talk to an industrial designer, uh, you know, then start looking at sourcing? How, how did that work? Yeah. So even as someone that had a design background and that worked with a lot of factories in China, I still had to do a ton of research on what I needed. So then um, initially I used the sourcing company to figure out what the best factory would be to produce the pet crates. Okay. So you use a sourcing company and then you found that you did, I'm sure you did multiple rounds of testing. Yes. So you do yeah. back and forth like development, you know, um, I, so I worked with an engineer, like a design engineer that helps you execute your idea, your theme, and then you do a prototype and then you see if that's manufacturable from the factory's point of view, and then you just go back and forth. And that process takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. And, and commitment financially, I presume, I mean, you have to commit to a minimum order quantity. Yeah. Because every time you do a prototype, it can cost, depending on what the product is, like mine costs two to $3,000 because it was like a bigger product, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, there, you, I mean, you have to be committed to doing something if you start it, <laughs> especially like something like hard goods where you actually need a mold to produce it. And that yeah. was my background in design. So I did a lot of plastic parts. Okay. So you get to, you got your product, you're ready to go. What was your next step? I launched the Kickstarter to raise funds to see if like this was even something that people wanted. So I did a Kickstarter and I did it like a little family and friends round and um, I got the money for the mold and then I went to production. And from there I worked part time because I had a full time job and I to fund my company. And so I worked on it nighttime um, to see it would sell and you know in and in the beginning it just takes a lot of time you know mm -hmm. you sell like few a day and then it just kind of like grows from there and I obviously you hit milestones those are successes you also hit barriers what are some of the biggest barriers that made you think gosh should i really continue to do this well i mean it's just the entrepreneurial journey is just like setbacks after setbacks after setbacks especially in the beginning um, because yeah. you're just learning and no one knows how to do this stuff. And so then some challenges were like, you know, there was like a trademark issue when we launched uh, the first name was Chasing Monkey. And there was another company named Mighty Monkey um, hey. who served cats. And then they sent us like a cis and this cis letter. And, you know, we had to take the logo out of the mold. Um, that was challenging. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean... I, I guess is, you know, but then after a while, as you grow as an entrepreneur, you just realize that's just part of the process and you're going to have setbacks that you'll probably, right. you know, overcome. So at some point you transition from being the face of the brand to having the brand be in front, right? Or, or do you still play an active role as the face of the brand or have you kind of let it take its own life? 
You know, I wish it took its own life uh, at by, at this point, but we're still at a infancy stage. So I still have to really push the product. I'm the salesperson. I work with all the retailers. Um, and, you know, even on Instagram, like I talk about my journey. I talk about the product. So that does a lot better than, you know, when we post other people's content. Um, so yeah. you still have to, you know, push the brand forward because as I mean, for, for myself, um, because we're yeah. not at a point where the brand kind of takes a personality of its own. And that's what a great message too, for people is that, you know, you are your best creator slash influencer, even if it's a micro. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing you at, at the open mic night when we had that in LA and it was just, you know, obviously you can feel your passion, your energy and the investment you've made in doing something to bring a product that really wasn't available uh, to market and to people. So where are you selling right now? What channels do you sell on? So, excuse me. Um, we sell on D2C, kindtail.com. Uh, we're in Target stores and also Target.com. We're on Amazon and we're also on Petco.com. Okay. What are some of the more successful channels for you and why? Us, it's been, it, Target has been our biggest channel because um, it we launched last year q4 in target retail stores and um it's our biggest channel and biggest opportunity for growth um i'm hoping that we can get into more other uh other regional pet stores as well because that'll um just kind of help us help pro people see our product you know in person as opposed to just only seeing it online okay and then what about social commerce has that been effective for you yes very effective because, you know, as when you launch your brand, it's, it takes a lot of money to get the word out, to have people find out about you. And sure. where can you find organic um, you know, marketing is on social con content. So it's been. Instagram, you're, you're in the process. You're going Instagram to TikTok, to TikTok shop. Have you made that transition? How, what is, what are the differences have you found in those platforms? We've been on Instagram for a while and we've been able to grow our Instagram channel. TikTok is a whole new beast that I, you know, frankly, I don't quite understand. We're actually in the process of hiring a TikTok um, manager. Um, so, you know, I think with this each, with different channels, you have to figure out what works for you as a brand and then go all in. But at the same time, you can't spread yourself so thin where you do every, you try to do everything well. You just got to figure out the one that works for you the best. Stick with that. And then once that's ready, then you jump, you know, add different channels. Great. And are you engaging with other creators? Do you, do you engage with people or pet owners and yeah. do you send them product? Do you, how do you, how do you engage in your people to post yeah. for you? We work with a lot of influencers um, where we reach out to them or they reach out to us. A lot of people reach out to us because they get a new puppy and then they see that our crate is available. Um, so we, but then, uh, so it's both ways we work with them and they reach out to us. But at the same time, we, there's some influencers that we love working with. So then, you know, we always rely because you're building a community online. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just transactional. You want relationships to be transformational. Like, so we work with certain influencers and we actually have relationships. Like, and I, you know, the thing about having influencers is that they get inundated with so many product requests and, um, you know, partnerships that really have to stand out as a brand and whether it's through product and, you know, you, the founder, um, you, it's, a way to build a relationship and that time has to be, you know, um, fostered in order to build a relationship. Question. Uh, so this is the segment, the, the shout out for solutions uh, segment of the, the interview. What solutions are you using, software, platforms, et cetera, that you really like? You don't have to say the ones you hate. Mm -hmm. uh, you certainly could, but the ones that you really are excited about, this is really helping facilitate. Oh, so I love Triple Whale where it's like a dashboard for all your e-commerce metrics. That's been very helpful. Um, and I also like Gorgeous, the customer service ticketing service, although they did raise, increase their price by a lot. <laughs> and so, yeah. um, but those are probably the two big softwares that I use um, daily 
Clavio, but you know, they're very expensive. Anything else you want to say for the audience? Any messages of inspiration? I guess my message is entrepreneurship is a journey. If you love it, I guess you'll stick with it. Part about entrepreneurship that I love the most is self-discovery because you find out so much things about yourself, you know, and it's always a learning experience. And when you're rely when I used to work for a lot of big companies and when there was like a problem to be solved, it didn't just fall on you. You know, you could ask and you had a group right. of people and, you know, yeah, you, you got to solve things together. But when you're an entrepreneur, you almost have to do it by yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and then and then I in the beginning, I would be like, OK, who can answer this for me? And I and you realize the only person that can answer it is you. With that comes a lot of growth. You know, you're never going to get that kind of growth. So entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. But, you know, if you want to learn more about yourself and you want to grow, um, I guess, take the leap and do what you love. Before we conclude, I have a, another question about where you're selling globally. If, if you're or you're looking to expand outside the U.S. So we're currently in Korea, Philippines, Singapore, um, and we're trying to break into the European market. So. When you say you're in it, you're in it through distributors or direct yeah. to consumer? Yeah, it's distributors. Uh, distributors. Is there a reason you wouldn't go direct to consumer? I presume volume, the size of your product is. Yeah, expensive. and just operations. Someone would have to manage the D to C operation within that country, mm -hmm. if you will, unless you were doing like Amazon FBA or something like that. But even Amazon FBA um, needs a lot of operations to make sure that that market is working. So you sell on Amazon now, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Who does you, what do you do? The Amazon FBA in domestically? Um, some products, the smaller products, we do Amazon FBA and then the crates we do FBM. Great. All right. Last question for you that I have to ask, cause you know, uh, the heart trophy and the other trophy behind you, can you tell me what those are? Oh, this is my husband's desk. So he's a sports broadcaster. Um, and that's his Emmy and I think that's, Another. I, I knew that looked familiar, the Emmy. I was like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Another award is um, from Elite 11. It's like a college um, I mean, um, quarterback training camp for high school kids. Yeah. Fair enough. Not, not, not pet related, but I get it. Yeah. That's fine. And, and this is Ted Lasso in a can. <laughs> That's Everyone should have a, a, a can of Ted Lasso around. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, again, Amy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for inspiring us. Uh, we'll see you out there on the road. If we could be of any help, let us know. Uh, and uh, everybody who wants to have a, how would you, how would you frame your your product in two sentences? Beautiful, moderate, and functional. Pet collapsible pet crate, oh, correct? Collapsible, yes. Like, I mean, if they don't know that part. <laughs> yes, we design products to have, uh, create more joyful moments between you and your pet. That's an interesting statement because, and I, I have the feeling this touches on that challenge of an entrepreneur is where do you, I say circle the wagons or where do you, where does the umbrella stop? Are you a crate, a collapsible crate company? No, you're actually broader than that. Right now your product is this, but at what point do you say, no, we're not a, a this product. We're a solution for, you know, for pets in general. Yes, we're a solution. We're a product company where we design products that enhances you and your pet's life together. And our crate is our flagship product, but we're launched, we've launched a few other products, not crates, but also we're launching like five more products this year that is different. And okay, so the common denominator is pets, bringing pets and, and the owners closer together. Correct, yes. Because Through product, back, it, who's you know, smart. back then your pets had their own life and you had their own life. But as um, times change, we take our pets everywhere, our work, um, when we go out. So then we want to enhance that experience so you can be with your pet everywhere. I love that. I, I do. I'm, I'm actually, my pet is not here because I think mommy's upstairs, but I've missed my pet already. So <laughs> awesome. Thanks again, Amy. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Josh. See you soon. That was Amy Kim from Kindtail, bringing pets and owners together through amazing, intelligent, smart design products. If you want more information about entrepreneurs doing amazing things around the world, follow us at The Van Ambassador. Right there.